All right, what I'd like to talk a bit about today is subculturing Cercospora, Zeamatis, and especially Zeana. And one of the main things I'd like to talk about is how to increase cultures from the point of having a, a single a point inoculation to having lawns of canidia that can be used to inoculate liquid cultures for DNA extraction. So here's an example of a culture that has been point inoculated and grown for probably around two weeks in this case. And as you can see, the, uh, the, the culture is uneven in color and morphology, but there are regions that are producing canidia. And so those can be cut using the padding technique described earlier and gradually amplified to begin to produce lawns of canidia, as you can see here. And in time, that can then be cut out to produce increasingly more uniform lawns until finally a fairly consistent uniformly canidiated culture is obtained. These cultures can in turn be scraped with uh, sterile water and a hockey stick spreader to obtain solutions of canidia which can be plated to rapidly increase uh, production of canidia. So an example would be this is a nice uniform culture of the OIPA uh, strain of Cercospora Zienna. And just to show the difference, this is a suspension, a canidial suspension uh, culture that has gone too long. So as you can see, uh, certainly there's a lot of uh, white aerial hyphae being formed, vegetation in the culture, which uh, does not recover. And if this were to be scraped and inoculated to plates, uh, it certainly would not generate uh, very many canidia. And it's less than ideal to use for inoculation of cultures for genomic DNA. So the process to start a liquid culture is actually quite straightforward and simple. Usually I add about a mil of sterile water to a plate. And with a spreader, gently scrape the surface of the plate. The most important thing here is to just gently rub the, the hockey stick over the surface of the culture without digging in excessively. This will dislodge the canidia. And eventually, with a little patience, completely cover the plate. A sign that a uh, it's been done correctly is that the culture after being scraped will be almost uniformly darker in color but the spore suspension will have very few solid particles. So as we scrape this down When drawn up in a transfer pipette, the gray, cloudy, turbid solution is what we're looking for without large chunks of canidia present. Now to take this into to subculture and to make more plates of spore suspensions, usually about 200 microliters, which equates from a transfer pipette, a 3 mil transfer pipette, to about 4 or 5 drops, can be dropped in as so. And then with a, usually I would get a, a, a fresh sterile hockey spreader. But then simply plate it a lot like you would bacteria on the plate. Uniform. Spread it around. And then normally what I would do would be to transfer the plate to the front of the laminar flow hood so that the passage of air, you know, gradually dries the plate. So this same suspension of canidia could be transferred to a liquid culture and here are some examples. After a few days the liquid culture when using a rich medium like YEPD 
So you can see the tissue is a brownish tan maybe in color, uh, fairly even spacing, not a lot of uh, large clumps, lots of, of smaller clumps present in the culture. And this is a product of shaking at room temperature for approximately three days at about 100 RPM. This tissue would be suitable for DNA extraction and possibly even protoplast production. This is an example of a very thick culture, a much heavier inoculum, but that has unfortunately gone a little bit far. This culture is slightly older. And although this culture, the tissue could still be used for genomic DNA extraction, it's a little bit too melanized to make good protoplasts. And this is an example of a culture that has really gone much too far. This has gone over 10 days. And although there's a fair amount of biomass, uh, it's very dark, very melanized. Uh, this this is, will produce genomic DNA that's very hard to get clean and uh, will not protoplast well at all. Now these three liquid cultures are, uh, this one is OYPA. So this would be a three-day culture of Cercospora ziena. These two are ziematis. And ziena behaves in a very similar fashion as far as becoming melanized and uh, unsuitable for extraction after time.